Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Sun Devil Learning Labs. This episode is kindergarten math. I will be your teacher today. My name is Miss Kopp, that's K-O-P-P, -P, that's me. And today we are working on math foundations. That means what skills do you guys as kindergartners need to have to become great students? Can you count? Can you write your numbers? Do you know your shapes? Do you know your colors? So those are all things that we're gonna be working on today and throughout the rest of this series. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, like I said, Miss Kopp, K-O-P-P, -P, that is me. And today is week seven, day five of this Sun Devil Learning Labs programming. So we really appreciate it if you've been watching our other episodes and you're tuning back in. Thank you so much for joining us. If this is your first time watching, we are we're so happy to have you. We follow a really regular rhythm and pattern each day. So if you like what you see today, you can expect some more of the same great content from the rest of our episodes. So let's dive into what we're actually working on today. Today over here in our green rectangle over here is our agenda. Our agenda. That means what's our schedule for today? What are we doing today? So today we're going to do a little bit of number work. We're going to talk about our tripod grip. That's how we hold what what we write with. Then we're going to do a read aloud. It's a really fun story of Jack and the Beanstalk, but a little spin on it of eating healthy and how does the, how did the giants eat healthy? And then we're going to play a game called Fill My Plate that goes along with our read aloud for today as well. And as always, I have a little bit of practice at home some different activities you guys can do to practice those same math foundation skills at home by yourselves. So over here in the yellow square, we have our materials. Our materials, that means what do you guys need today to get through this lesson with me? So these materials you will only need if you want to practice writing our number of the day today. So our number of the day today is five. If you would like to practice writing the number five with us, you will need something to write with, maybe a crayon, a pencil, a marker, a colored pencil, whatever you have is perfect, and then something to write on. So maybe that's a piece of paper, maybe that's a whiteboard, maybe it's some cardboard from the recycling, whatever you have is perfect. And last thing, I like to hang my paper vertically when I write, hang it up and down like this vertically when I write. Um, so if you would like to do that with me instead of writing horizontally, like on a table or a desk, if you would like to hang it vertically, you will need maybe some tape, a thumbtack, some way to um, keep that paper secure and hanging. So let's see what our standards are for today. That just means what are the people in charge tell us teachers that we need to teach you in kindergarten. So that's what we're working on today. Can we write our numbers? Do we understand how to use our numbers in real life, how to count in real life? And can you answer questions that ask, how many? If I say, how many eyes do I have? How many fingers am I holding up? Those kinds of questions, can you answer that? So that's just a little preview at what we're going to be working on today in this lesson. But let's get started with our number line, our warm up of our number line. Just like we read a book, we're going to read our number line starting on the left and moving over to the right. So I put a big arrow up here to help us remember. We start at the left and move to the right. So we're going to start at zero and count up to 10. So if you can count from zero to 10, go ahead and count out loud with me as I'm reading the number line. Try to follow along with your finger as we're going. If you're not sure how to count to 10 yet, that's totally fine. Go ahead and rewind the video a few times and get familiar with it. Um, and keep tuning into our episodes and you'll definitely be feeling good about counting in no time. So with that, let's begin over here at zero. I'm gonna have a sip of water to warm up and get my throat warmed up. So, starting at zero and counting up to 10, let's begin. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. 
So that is our number line, zero to 10. Like I said, you can rewind the video if you want to hear it a few more times. You can pause the video and count on your own and work with those numbers to get a little more practice. That's perfect. We are going to dive into our number of the day. Our number of the day today is five, five. So here's a big giant five for you up on the screen so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So first we're going to practice writing our number of the day. So now is the time to get out that paper, something to write with like a crayon or a marker, um, and some tape if you want to hang your paper up. So go ahead and pause the video here if you need to gather those materials. Right now I am going to hang my paper up. Um, to do that I'm just taking a very small piece of tape there's a really small piece of tape and I will be hanging my paper up on that easel like you saw. So when we're talking about writing our numbers, we need to talk about how do we hold what we're writing with. So that is called our tripod grip. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do that in just a moment, but to get our hands and fingers warmed up and ready for our tripod grip, I have a little exercise. So we are going to touch the tip of each finger to your thumb, one at a time. So it looks like this, your pointer finger, your middle finger, your ring finger, and your pinky finger. So you can do it um, quite a few times. Your hands will start feeling it really soon. So your fingers, are they know that they're working. They know they're getting a good workout. So you can pause the video to do that a few more times. If that feels maybe a little too easy for you, you can go backwards, start at your pinky, move towards your pointer finger, or maybe you want to do both hands at one time and try to go a little bit faster. That is totally up to you. So if you want a little more time to do that warm up, pause the video here, take a few minutes, get your hands and fingers moving and thinking about it. Um, now we are going to talk about how do we actually do it? How do we actually hold it and make the tripod grip? So to do our tripod grip, you're going to take your pointer finger and your thumb and pinch pinch, pinch, pinch. We're going to pinch the bottom end of whatever you're writing with. So I'm using um, a little colored pen that I have at home with me. Maybe you have a crayons or markers or colored pencils. That's totally fine. You're going to pinch the end of whatever you're using. Just like that, pinching the end. Then last thing you need to do is take that middle finger and slide it underneath whatever you're writing with. Slide it underneath that marker so your marker is sort of resting on top. So when you're doing it correctly, you only have three fingers actually touching it. One, two, three. So that is our tripod grip. So now that we know how to hold something and how to hold it to write with, let's look at how do we actually write the number five. So here's a little picture, a little picture of the steps you take to do it. Um, we also have, oops, sorry. I also have a little rhyme over here to help us remember how to write the five. Straight line down, then around, hat on top, and five's a clown. So five is a pretty cool shape. It's got quite a few different shapes in there, doesn't it? So to do our number five, let me see. There we go. To do our number five, we're going to start at the top and at the right. Top right. We're going to make a straight line over to the left. Oop. Oh, that's pretty light. So let me see if I can get you a little closer to see that. Hopefully that helps a little. So we start at the right and straight line over to the left, straight line. Then we're going to make a straight line down, down, one line down, and then around, around. So across, down, around, around, across, down, around. That is how we make our five. So go ahead and take a second and try to do this on your own, on your own paper. First, you start at the right and do a straight line to the left. Straight line to the left. Then a straight line down. Straight line down. Then around, around, and that is how you make a five. So you can do like I'm doing where you trace over your same drawing 
over and over and over again. You can try to fill up your whole page with fives if you're feeling really good about the number five. But that is how we write the number five. That's our number of the day today, how to write the number five. Now that we know how to write the number five, well, if you'd like to take a little more time practicing, you can pause it right here, pause on this screen where you have the picture and the directions um, right here for you as well. But now that we've seen how to write the number five, let's look at different ways we can see the number five. There's quite a few ways. So in that green box in the middle there, that's how we write the number five. We just practice writing that number. Let's look over here in the top right box. This, these letters, this spells the word five. So if we wanted to use letters to say five instead of a number to say five, we would write F I V E five. Over here on the top left, that's our tens chart. We talk about this every day because it's so important, our tens chart. So we have 10 empty boxes. We want to show a number. Today we want to show the number five. So we filled in five of those 10 boxes. One, two, three, four, five. Down here in the bottom left corner, we have those tally marks. Remember, tally marks are what we use to keep track of something that's happening really, really, really fast. So tally marks, we've talked about this once before. When you see a diagonal tally mark instead of a vertical tally mark, when you see it cutting across the other ones, saying, that's it, that's our group, you know that this is a group of five tally marks. That's what that um, diagonal one means, that that's five. Only five, no more, no less. If you see that, cut across it, that is five. So those are our five tally marks. And over here, I like to have a picture of something with our number of the day. So this is a picture of five candles. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. Five candles. Five. So that's our number of the day today. Tune back in next week and we'll have a different number of the day coming for you. Um, that gets us through our number work for today and now it's time for our read aloud of Jack and the Hungry Giant. Eat right with my plate. And it's written and illustrated by Laureen Leedy. So thank you, Laureen, for providing this book for us. I love this book and it really shows us um, a lot of information about our foods. So let's dive in. Late one afternoon, Jack got into big trouble. Why did you trade our lovely cow for these silly beans? He had to go to bed early. So this is little Jack getting yelled at by his mom who's saying, why did you do that? Why did you sell our cow for these silly little beans? And she throws them out the window. Silly beans. He's gone to bed early. When Jack woke up the next morning, he heard a strange rustling noise. It was coming from a huge beanstalk that was growing, growing, growing up into the sky. Jack started climbing higher and higher and higher. There's his feet. You can see just his feet. He's already pretty high up. Jack came to a big house. Actually, it was a giant house. When nobody answered the door, he squeezed underneath it. That was a bad idea. So here's little Jack. He's come up onto this giant house, and the house is so big that Jack can actually squeeze into the house underneath the door, where like bugs would usually squeeze into our houses under the door. That was a bad idea because here's that big cat. That cat must be a giant cat. It's huge. Look at how big that cat is compared to Jack. Jack tried to hide and then had to dive into a boot. Pee! So over here, he's hiding behind his broom and over on the right side, like you can see his feet sticking up out of this giant's boot. And Jack is saying, pee, like it stinks in here. I don't want to have my head in a shoe. Jack squinched as far down as he could. Then he heard the front door opening. Creak. A giant picked up the boot, stared at Jack and said, 
I'm hungry. The giant had a huge knife with a daring leap. Jack tried to escape. So Jack's jumping out of the hand of the giant with a knife. The giant grabbed him and said, be careful, my tiny friend. Are you hungry too? Let's have a healthy meal. I'm Waldorf. What's your name? Um, Jack. So the giant actually caught him and saved him and said, be careful, guy. What are you doing? And then he introduced himself. He said, I'm Waldorf. What's your name? Tell me, Jack, what are your favorite vegetables? Squash, peas, turnips? I like corn, but I can't eat this much. Look at how big that corn is compared to Jack. Thanks for fixing the fruit salad, Jack. You're welcome, Waldorf. So my picture is covering Jack, let me show you. He's making the fruit salad. He's throwing everything together into a bowl for a yummy fruit salad. And the cat's licking the watermelon, it looks like. We have many grains to choose from. Oop. Many grains to choose from. He says, no bad kitty. The cat's paw is trying to knock over their tower. They built up a pasta. So grains, there's a lot of grains. Popcorn, brown rice, bread, pita, tortillas, waffles, crackers, cereal, quinoa. There's tons of grains we eat. Let's choose our protein foods like nuts, seeds, beans, seafood, meat, or poultry. Poultry means the birds that people eat like chicken and turkey. So protein, nuts are protein, seafood is protein, seafood like shrimp and salmon and scallops and sardines. Then there's other meats like ham, ground beef, lamb, and eggs. We have some dairy foods too, like hmm, cottage cheese, mozzarella cheese, Swiss cheese, milk, and yogurt. Baldorf chopped and poured and stirred. His wife, Sophia, came home just in time to eat. Hello there. Hello, darling, grab a plate. And Jack saying, hi. Yeah. So it's healthy to fill half your plate with fruits and vegetables? Right, the other half has grains and protein. So you see their plate, this half is all full of fruits and vegetables. And this half is all full of grains and protein. Help yourself to a dairy serving too. That sounds good to me, Sophia. So they're getting a glass of milk so they make sure that they have some dairy, which makes our bones nice and strong. Let's get some exercise later. We could toss boulders. We could play swamp tag. I know an excellent exercise, climbing. Bye guys, thanks again for the great grub. See you soon. So Jack's exercise, the exercise he's getting is climbing all the way back down that vine, all the way back to his house on the ground. So Waldorf's tips for eating healthy. Fill half your plate with fruits and vegetables. Eat a rainbow of vegetables. That means all different colors like green and yellow, orange, red, and purple. Make sure half your plate is grains. Make half of your grains whole grains. Eat a variety of protein foods. Dry beans and peas can count as either a vegetable or a protein. So there's some that can be both. That's pretty cool. And Waldorf says, have fewer foods and drinks with empty calories. That means added sugars and solid fats in foods increase calories without adding nutrients and vitamins. So that means these foods like hot dogs, cake, soda, ice cream, cookies, candy, those foods, they might fill you up, but they aren't good for your body. 
they don't give your body the healthy things it needs. So we need to be eating that healthy food we talked about. So to get a little bit of practice eating that healthy food we were talking about, we have a little game called Fill My Plate. So we know that our plate should be, here's my plate. It should be half fruits and vegetables and half grains and proteins. So we're going to make a little meal together and we're going to pick some foods to fill our plate with. So first, let's choose one vegetable. Hmm, so let's look at all the vegetables that Waldorf had available for us. I see a lot of vegetables. You can pause the video here and look at the pictures and try to pick out your favorite if you have a favorite. If you don't have a favorite, pick out which one looks coolest, which one you want to try. Hmm, I think my favorite is cucumber. So I'm gonna go to my plate my half that's fruit and vegetables, and I'm going to put a cucumber on my fruit and vegetable half. Now, let's choose one fruit. Hmm. You can pause the video here again and look at all those yummy fruits that Waldorf has available for us. Pick your favorite or which one looks the coolest or which one you've never ever seen before. Hmm, I think my favorite fruit on this page is the peach. The peach. That's my one fruit I'm choosing. So I'm going to put my peach on the side of my plate that's half fruits and vegetables. So there is my peach. Peaches and cucumbers so far. I wonder if those would be good together. So now it's time to pick our grains. Pick our grains. So we're going to pick one. So pick one of these. Which one's your favorite or which one do you want to have? Maybe popcorn, couscous, brown rice, oatmeal, waffles, bread, cereal, pasta, bagels. There's all kinds of choices. So pause the video and take your time and pick out hmm, just one. Which one would you choose? Hmm, I would choose cereal. So I'm going to put cereal on my half of my plate that is for grains and proteins. So here is my cereal, my grains and proteins. Next, let's pick one protein. Choose one protein. Hmm. You can pause the video and look at the pictures and see which one do you want to try or what would go with the other foods you've picked? What would taste good together? We have all kinds of choices, all kinds of meats, different fish, different beans. I think I'm going to go with some nuts maybe some cashews and walnuts and almonds. Those are a really healthy source of protein. So those nuts I'm going to put on that seam, the side with the protein and grains. There they are, my cashews, my walnuts, my almonds. So this is my plate, my friends. How many items, how many different pieces of food do you see on my plate? Let's count them together. One, two, three, four. I have four pieces of food on my plate. Remember, our plate is split in half, right? So half our plate has fruits and vegetables and half our plate has grains and protein. So if it's split in half, I wonder how many foods I have on each half. Let's look at my half with fruits and vegetables. So how many items are in this half? Go ahead and say it out loud. How many items do you see in this half? Hmm. One, two. So there's two foods in this half of my plate. What about on this half of my plate? If there's four foods total, and I'm only looking at this half, how many foods do we have? Go ahead and say it out loud. Hmm. We have one, two, two foods. So we have four foods total 
my plate has four foods total. But when I split it in half, then I have two foods on one half and two foods on the other half. So that is my example of a healthy plate. I hope you guys remember that and keep it in mind next time you're eating. Think about, is what I'm eating healthy? Is there something healthier I could be eating instead? So for some practice at home, some different ways to practice your counting skills at home, um, it's great to count during meal times, like we saw with our plates, right? So there's tons of different things you can count uh, during meals. Maybe you want to count the number of bites you take or the number of vegetables on your plate or the how many cups of water you drink. It's totally up to you and it's fun to get creative and think about what can I count? What can I measure um, while I'm eating? So it's a great way to make really good use of that time and make it a little bit more educational. So counting during meal times. And then on the next slide, I have another activity uh, to give you some practice with counting and with shapes. So for the top half of this activity up here, you see the instructions. Students will just color five of each object. So it's up to them to figure out how many is five and how many should I color? Color five of each object. And on the bottom half, they'll still color five and then draw some additional circles and write their total. So that's a fun little bonus challenge at the end. So you can screenshot this page and print it off so you can, your student can write on it and mark it up and color it. Um, you can screenshot it and edit this page on your device if you're able to, or you can just do it in your head. You can pause the video right here, look at this um, worksheet and try to just imagine doing it. Don't actually touch your computer screen. You don't want to hurt it. Just lightly hover over it. Then you can pretend to color in each shape. Color in five of these moons or five of these suns. So that's up to you on how to use this, but it is all yours. Like I said, feel free to screenshot and print. Um, you can also screenshot this page if you'd like to save these directions as well. Um, I have had such a great time teaching you today. This has been already in the blink of an eye. That's the end of of week seven of our programming. So thank you so much if you've been watching all of our episodes or if this is the only one you've tuned into, that's amazing too. Um, I've had a lot of fun today. I hope you guys stay safe and keep practicing those math skills until I see you again.